Well, it's that time again. The Realme number series updated with their new product, the Realme 9 series. Our channel has just uploaded the hands-on video of Realme 9 Pro. Those who are interested in the 9 Pro can check it out. In this video, we focus on Realme 9 Pro Plus. Come with us to see that what upgrades are available in Realme 9 Pro Plus. Also, we're going to do you a uh, Realme 9 Pro as a gift. If you guys want it, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and then click on the address below to win the lottery. Maybe the future owner of this Realme 9 Pro is you. The design of Realme 9 Pro Plus is still similar to the previous Realme phones. The lens design is basically the same as the GT2 series. The SIM card tray can hold two SIM cards but not a micro SD card. There is an NFC and headphone jack but no IR blaster. But the vibration mo motor has been upgraded to an X-axis liner motor. When you are typing, it feels very crispy. The speakers have also been upgraded to stereo dual speakers. Remember that Flurio recent back cover of Realme 8 Pro? This time, the 9 Pro Plus has a new technology on the back cover as well. The Realme 9 Pro Plus we've got is Sunrise Blue. Realme has used photochronism design for the first time. This light shift design allows you to back cover to change color when exposed to sunlight. If you are indoors or in a place without sunlight, this phone looks just plain blue. Shiny and sparkly like the sky at night. When you are exposed to the sunlight for a while, this phone will turn red. It's like the sun slowly rising in the morning. Very beautiful. I'm sure there will be many people who will like this design. Who wouldn't like a phone that changes color, right? The screen of Realme 9 Pro Plus has not changed much compared to last year's 9 Pro. It's still a 1080p resolution AMOLED display, but the refresh rate has been upgraded to 90Hz. And there is also DC dimming, the lower bezel is still as thick as ever. I personally hope Realme can make the lower bezel a little narrower. The fingerprint recognition type is in-display fingerprint recognition, and heart rate measurement is possible. The colors are vibrant and it also has AOD. You can't say the Realme 9 Pro Plus screen isn't improved. After all, it has an upgraded refresh rate, but it's really not a big upgrade. At least, you won't be buying this phone for the screen. The Realme 9 Pro Plus is powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 920, a mid-range processor that we've seen in the Redmi Note 11 Pro and Pro Plus China versions, and has a bench score that compares side by side with the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus China version. And the two is close to 500,000 points. 3D Mark 2300 points. Geekbench 5 scores are also a bit higher than the 11 Pro Plus for both single and multi core. Probably because Realme 9 Pro Plus uses the vapor chamber cooling system. The larger heatsink area allows the 9 Pro Plus to unleash even more performance. The actual gaming performance is also in line with my expectations for it. PUBG Mobile only runs at extreme frame rate on smooth graphics. Like the Redmi, it runs at 60 frames per second throughout. Bright rate is like at 22 frames per second on the Realme 9 Pro Plus, and the phone temperature is only 36 degrees Celsius. So we can't see the real gaming performance of Realme 9 Pro Plus either. The Genshin Impact without locked frame rates averaged 41 frames per second. A full 7 frames per second higher than the Note 11 Pro Plus. And the body temperature was only 42 degrees Celsius. But that's not to say that the 9 Pro Plus is suitable for Genshin, as the large frame rate fluctuation make it not a good gaming experience either. So, although it's an improvement over the previous Realme 9 Pro Snapdragon 720G, the Dimension 920 is still an underperforming processor. If you are a devoted gamer, consider Realme's GT series. We thought using HM2 sensor as the main camera on the mid-range phone was already a luxury, but Realme 9 Pro Plus actually uses IMX766 as its main camera at this price point. And it also has OIS, which means it has flagship level photo potential. In fact, its main camera does manage to reach close to top flagship levels as well. The daytime colors are vibrant and dynamic range is excellent thanks to its excellent sensor. You can get an excellent picture even if you use 2x digital crop to take a picture in good light. 
If the scene being photographed is not too complicated, even a 5x image is sufficient for most people. When night falls, the IMX 766's strength can only be fully realized. Every photo is very clear and sharp. Both exposure, dynamic range, and noise control are top level. And because of the addition of OIS, there's basically no blurring of photos due to the handshake. I'll put a photo comparison with Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus in the same scene here, and you'll see how good Realme 9 Pro is. To be honest, this is the first time I've gotten such good photos on a budget phone. If you showed me these photos and asked me to guess which phone took them, I would never guess that it would be a mid-range phone that could take these photos. Although it has a great main camera, it doesn't mean it's perfect. The biggest drawback is that its lens coating is not good enough. It causes the reflection of the light to appear in your picture, and there is also a lot of flare, which will ruin your photos. Realme 9 Pro Plus's night mode will improve the dynamic range of your photos, but it will also reduce the exposure and make the phones darker. This bug has also appeared in previous Realme phones. They may fix this problem in new system versions after sale. The ultra-wide camera doesn't perform as well against the main camera. If there's enough light, the ultra-wide camera performs quite well. At least the colors are pleasing and the dynamic range is okay. But when there is not enough light, this 8 megapixel ultra-wide angle camera is not so good. Whatever you shoot is blurred, like a layer of fog in front of the lens. The quality of photos will be much better when you turn on the night mode. Of course, it may be because our system version is not the final official version, so Realme still needs to optimize the photo effect and auto mode of ultra wide angle camera before sending the phone to the users. This is a main camera 4K 30 frame per second video recording footage. You can see the picture is very clear and natural colors. But you must have noticed that the footage is very shaky. Because of its weak performance, there is no way to add EIS in the 4K resolution. Only rely on OIS is no way to do a stable image. Dynamic range is also very dependent on the performance of the processor. So dynamic range is actually not particularly good. The ultra-wide camera can only record 1080p 30 frame per second video. The low quality of the video made me wonder for a while whether I had chosen a 1080p resolution. My advice is to try to avoid using ultra-wide camera video it. This time, the box is designed to look better than the previous one. Inside the box, there's a charger, charging cable, and phone case. The charger is 65 watts, but the phone only supports up to 60 watts. 10 minutes to charge 42%, half an hour to charge 90%, and only 30 minutes to full. The battery capacity is the same as Realme 9 Pro is, 
4,500 million per hour. However, online video 4%, TikTok 5%, 3 games consumes 6%, 6 and 10% power respectively. Thanks to the performance is not powerful, so the battery life should be very long. Realme 9 Pro Plus is designed with the same idea as Realme 8 Pro. Performance is lower priority and the focus is on enhancing the camera. The other specs are as good as you can get. It's not for those who like to play games, but for those who like to take pictures but don't have much budget, it may be the most suitable choice. As the old saying goes, there is no perfect phone, only the most suitable phone for you. Well, that's the end of this video. I have to remind you once more that the Realme 9 Pro is on giveaways. Subscribe to our channel and get a new phone. Why not? This is James from Gizmochena and I'll see you in the next video.